We have the star, but now we have to figure out the planetary basics. Hi everyone, it's JD, and we're continuing with our world building series. This time it's, well, it's scientific again. But we're focusing on the planet itself. Just the basics though. We're not going into a lot of detail. But to begin, we need to figure out where the planet is. Around a star, there's a zone called the Goldilocks zone, or the habitable zone, where a planet can have liquid water on its surface. We need to figure out exactly where this is. Now, why is this important? Well, it'll actually help us figure out what the calendar is going to be like, how long the year is. So, we need to find out how far this planet is from its star. Are you ready for the equation? I'll just put it down here. It is uh, d equals ts squared times rs divided by 2 tp squared, all multiplied by the square root of 1 minus a over 1 minus tau over 2. Sounds a little complicated, doesn't it? Well, I'll break it down for you. d is the distance of the planet from the star. Ts is the temperature of the star. Now, you can find out this information on Wikipedia or you can make it up yourself, but be sure you have something realistic. Rs is the radius of the star. Again, you can use Wikipedia or try to figure out something realistic. A is the albedo of the planet. Now, an albedo of 1 means it is totally reflective. Every bit of light will be reflected off of the planet. Now, this would be a very icy and cold planet. Now, if the albedo is 0, that means it is a black body and it has absolutely no reflection. Very unrealistic. For a good idea of uh, an appropriate number, 0 0.37 is the albedo of the Earth. Just remember, the higher the number goes, the colder it's going to be. A forest can be anywhere between 0 0.09 and 0 0.18. Grass is 0 0.25. And desert sand is 0 0.40. Now this does seem a little odd, doesn't it? Sand reflects light a lot. So why is the desert so hot? Well, this has to do with the number that corresponds with tau. Tau is the optical depth. A higher number means that it's going to be hotter, while a lower number means it's going to be colder. Now, optical depth is the property of the atmosphere. So if you have a high number, that means you have a very strong greenhouse effect. If you have a zero, that means you have no atmosphere at all. For comparison, Earth is 0 0.6, while Venus is much, much higher. It has a much stronger greenhouse effect. And finally, we have Tp, which is the temperature of the planet. This is what you want to figure out on your own. The Earth is about 288 Kelvin, or 15 degrees Celsius on average. If you want a hot planet, go with 313 Kelvin, or 40 degrees Celsius. If you want a cold one, 273 Kelvin or about 0 degrees Celsius would be fine. Now that would be an icy planet. So now we want to figure out the size of the planet. Now there are three choices. You can have an Earth-sized planet, which you're familiar with, or you can have a super-Earth. Now these are bigger than the Earth, they have higher gravity. The atmosphere is likely to be thicker. Also mountains are likely to be smaller. And there would very likely be quite a bit of volcanic and seismic activity. On the other end of the spectrum, a smaller planet would have lower gravity, probably higher mountains, but a thinner atmosphere. If it's anything like Mars, well, you can just say goodbye to the atmosphere. It's likely there won't be much in the way of volcanic or seismic activity, and you may not even have a magnetic field. Not very good for life. Now, the people living on these planets, well, if it's a super-Earth, they'd likely be shorter, stockier, have much stronger bones, and those on a lighter planet or smaller planet will likely be thinner, taller, and have weaker bones. You'll also want to consider how much water is on the surface. If it's anything like Earth, which is 75% water, you'll have very Earth-like climate on this planet, depending on where it is in the orbit. 
If it's more arid, you'll have less water, so have smaller lakes or seas. If you want a total water world, you can go right ahead, maybe a few islands here and there. That would be a very humid world, I would think. But what if your world is actually a moon of another planet, such as a gas giant, like in Avatar? Well, you'd have to consider that this moon will likely be tidally locked to its planet, so the days may be longer, depending on how long it takes to orbit the planet. And you would have a view of the planet on one side of this moon. It wouldn't move. It would just be there all the time, really large in the sky, which would be very interesting. There's a lot to consider in this one. However, a lot of it will be touched on again later on when we talk about climates, as well as water and seismic and volcanic activity. That'll be another video. So what did I do for my world, Ariadne? Well, I've got the numbers right here. So I took the temperature of the planet to be 288 Kelvin, which is similar to the Earth. I also took the albedo to be 0.39. And then the optical depth is pretty much the same as the Earth, which is 0 0.6. Uh, the temperature of Beta Comi Berenices is 5,935 Kelvin, which is a bit more than the Sun. And it is slightly larger than the sun at 1.106 times the radius of our sun. And so it has a radius of, well, this is a big number, 770,154,252 meters. I put all of these in the equation and I got a distance of 152,657,589 kilometers from the star. That is actually slightly larger than the distance of the Earth from the Sun. Some other things that I considered are, well, the size of Ariadne is 1.028 times the Earth's mass. Also, it's roughly similar to the Earth in terms of land to water ratio. It consists of one very large continent and three smaller continents. It has polar ice caps as well. And uh, this world is in a humid period, so the deserts are very few. As the planet is only 3 billion years old, it is more volcanically and seismically active than the Earth, so it's a bit unstable. And although I didn't mention moons in the previous section, it does have two moons. One is significantly larger than our moon, the other one is quite small. And because of this, Ariadne has pretty strong tides. Our next topic will be very similar, actually, it's going to be the calendar. So I'll tell you how to calculate a calendar for a planet. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Also, you can ask me to do any kind of topic you would like to see on world building, and I will probably do it. If you like the video, please give me a big thumbs up. Also, check way down over there, you'll see the previous and the next videos, as well as right down there, the playlist. And if you like this and you want to see more, please subscribe right down there. So thank you for watching. See you in the next video.